let's rewrite this the way it's supposed to look and then we'll simplify it right remember this is the index that is the exponent right so and then real easy when i say real easy i like to if i can if i can get rid of the index first or to the root part this is 25 and then we cube it right i'd get the square root of 25 first which is five and then reset five cubed right so remember that's a little two there that's where the two comes from right you usually don't write the two there and then five times five times five is 125. I got that sense that you guys get that. Okay. Any questions? Flink. And then six one fourth is 16 to the root four, which is? Tell your group what the answer is. What is it? So I know that you're engaged. Andrew, what is it? Two, very good. So two, because two times two times two times two is 16. And that's all you got to do. Okay. Uh, how are we doing on time? Okay, unit four test review. When's the test? Wednesday. Wednesday right, so we have no school on Monday. I'll give one review on Tuesday and then Wednesday. That's it. Think. Okay. Simplify with um, simplify the exponents. Okay. So we're not going to write the big number. I don't know if we have the big number out. But first, let's do the just write it six to the what power will that be? Yeah. You multiply them, right? If it's raised to this, you multiply five times three is six to the 15th power. Right? No problem. Remember, it's like this. Six to the fifth times six to the fifth times six. There's three of them, right? And then we have five here, five here, five here, right? Total of 15 sixes. Anyway, six to the 15th power. All right, cool. Can I move on? I can move on, Sensei. We got this. Okay. All right. Let's do it. Six to the fifteenth. Six to the fifteenth. Okay. Simplify this. So, go right down. We'll work it out. Remember, this is where we have to break out, like the jail is to the third root, right? So we got to break out of jail. So we got to find the prime factors of 54. And then you subtract them. So obviously we can subtract them. We need the same uh, base within the root. So I got to get, I can't, I can't subtract those as the way they are because they're not like terms for better ways of speaking. Because I can't, subtract. if that was a two of this third to the two power, I could subtract them. So for example, if it looked like this, don't write this down, five to the cube root of two minus one to the cube root of two, what would that equal? Tell your group, what would that equal? Yeah, I have five here, I have one here, take away one for the cube root of two, right? You see how that works? But I can't do that here. So you have to break it down. So break down the 54. What goes into 54? Six and nine. Let's find the prime factors. It's six prime, two and three, prime, prime is nine prime, three and three prime prime. So the cube root of 54, which I'm gonna write over here, is two times three times three times three. How many do I need to break out of jail? Three. three. So those go out. Two are gonna die. Two to the cube root of two. Three, sorry, because it's three, yeah, three out, right? 
sorry, right? Three to the cube root of two. So I'm going to erase this. And after doing that, I'll let you guys think about that for a bit. But our final thing here is going to be, you know, I'm in the way, three to the cube root of two minus the cube root of two. Now I can subtract. I think you could obviously see what your final answer is here and how we did that. And then that's going to be 3 minus 1, which is 2, the cube root of 2. 2 to the cube root of 2. And then that's your final answer. You talk? You guys are talking over. Plug this in. Okay, moving on. Can I move on? Raise your hand if you need more time for this. Okay, and so 2 to the cube root of 2 is the answer. And think. Okay, solve for x. Use that thing, it's gonna. Like this. Are you guys ready to work? I'm just gonna work through this as you guys do it. Let's do this as a class, okay? Since we don't have a lot of time, you guys can do this, work on this on your own. But uh, let's make it so that we can, or these are those really long problems here. So this is like the square root of 8x plus 20. You don't need to write, you don't need to do this step, but I feel like that this might make it easier to see equals x. Actually, this one's not so bad. What do I do next to solve this? Get rid of the square root by squaring both sides. Square, square, right? So what happens here? This becomes So what do I need to do now in order to solve for a quadratic? Set it equal to zero. Now I can either subtract x squared on both sides or subtract negative x and negative 20. These are just to subtract the negative x squared on both sides, right? No, why not? You don't want a negative x squared. That makes it harder, right? You want to make it easier. That's what I want to do. So I'm going to subtract 8x and 20. Subtract 8x and 20. I'm going to say 0 equals x squared minus 8x minus 20. You guys with me there? And now I can do the diamond, right? So negative 20 and negative 8. Is that factorable? 
times what equals 20. That's to negative 8. Negative 10 and 2. So I have x minus 10 times x plus 2. Now, we didn't talk about this last time, but first of all, we know what's x going to equal. X is either going to equal 10 or x is going to either equal negative 2. Now, only one of those is a correct answer. Okay? It's either going to be that or that. You guys with me? <coughs> now, one of them is not going to be correct because I need to get... I, um, what they call is the extraneous solution. You have to figure out which one's the extraneous solution. So let's go back up here and figure which one's not the correct answer. Is it 10 or negative 2? So you plug the answers in, right? So... Is it 8x plus 20? Help me run. So I'm running out of room here. What's, what's our original equation? Yeah. Let me change the colors. So we have 8x plus 20 to the 1 half power equals x. Okay, so let's plug them in. Let's plug in 10. 8 times 10 plus 20 to the 1 half or square root, does that equal 10? So I plugged in 10, right? They're equal. 8 plus 10 is 80 plus 20, right? To the 1 half, does that equal 10? Well, 100 to the 1 half, which is like the square root of 100, right? Does that equal 10? And yes, it does. So, so far, we're going to say that 10 works. A little check mark there, right? Now, let's try the other number, which was, was it negative 8? Ready for the next one? So let's put the next one. 8x, was it 8x plus 10? 8x plus 20 to the 1 half power. Does that equal x? And what was my other one? x equals, was it negative 8? Negative 2. Oh, negative 2. Okay, negative 2. Let's plug in negative 2. 8 to the negative 2 plus 20 all the one half does that equal negative two it equals positive two you can't get squared oh, you can't get okay well, negative. negative 16 plus 20 Square root of that is 4. And But with graphing, as far as we're going to go, we're only going to take the positive answer. Because this is the square root of 4. Does that equal negative 2? You can get the plus or minus, but as far as these go, we only want to get the positives. And that's another lesson for me to explain. But x is going to equal 10. That's a lot of work. Yeah. I just have those. If you want to go to the bathroom, you can. Any other questions? Or any, any, that was, that was, that's any other questions, I guess. The Twitcher was a quiz. That was a question. Right. No problem. Let's see what I have for the answer. I think 10. And now to do, remember when we talked about the square root, we only square the positives and not the negatives to make it a fun. Did I ever talk about that? 
All right, let's do another one. Graph the function, identify the domain and range. Graph the function, identify the domain and range. So there's going to be a lot of graphing on this test. Not because of you guys, because it's my last class, they really wanted to graph. Serious? All right. Okay, set up for the graphs. So Takes us a little bit of time to set up the graphs. Oh. You want to go to the rally today? Where's Henry's going? You going? Oh, cool. All right, what's my H and K? Tell your group, what's the H and K? What is it? If you're not talking, I'm gonna call you. Go, what's H and K? I can't say I don't know. H is zero, K is negative five. You guys get that? It's not if you got it or not. You're going to give me blank skip stairs. No? Raise your hand if you got that. I got that. I understand it now, Sensei. At least I get it. I get it now, Sensei. Right? Because the H goes in here, the K goes out here, right? So that means my vertex is going to be negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then you take the cube root of everything. We could do the table. I'm just going to take the cube root. We could do the table, right? So let's go this way. Go over one. What's the cube root of one? One. So go up one. What's the cube root of two? I don't know. Cube root of one, two, three. What's the next number I could get the cube root of? Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Cube root of eight is two, right? Cube root of negative one is negative one. Cube root of negative one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is negative two. And the cube root function is gonna look like this, like that. List the domain and range. Who understood that? I understood that, how I graphed that. Don't lie. I'm assuming you, those who didn't raise your hand, hopefully you're not too tired. But remember, if I'm going like this, f, x, and the cube root of x, which is the f of x, the h of x, right? we we'll get numbers that you can get the cube root up, right? So, however, um, like if I did a regular without the negative five, I'd plug in negative eight. If X is negative eight. I get the cube root of it. I get negative two, right? Because negative two times negative two times negative two is negative eight. If I get negative one, the cube root of negative one is negative one. Because negative one times negative one times negative one is negative one. Zero, zero, one, one and eight eight right you guys with me eight sorry see I, I did not make that mistake on purpose but it's good that i did because i could see that you're paying attention where's my eraser two and that's where i get these right positive one up one cube root one is one positive eight up eight Negative one, negative one, 
negative eight, cube root negative eight from this direction I go. But but uh, if you want to do these points, if you plug in zero, right? You go cube root zero, zero minus five is minus five. If I plug in one, what you're doing is cube root of one minus five. Cube root of one is one minus five is negative four. So do I go down negative four? One, two, three, four, right? That's how you get that point right there. All right, if you just plugged in, right? So I got uh, one, negative four is a point, right? If you plugged in two to this equation, one, or plugged in eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have room, I was gonna write it right here. So you get the cube root of eight, minus five, which is two minus five, which is negative three. And I go up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, down one, two, three, which would be the point uh, eight, negative three, based on whatever you plug in the equation, right? You plug in negative one, you're gonna get negative uh, six. Plug in negative eight, you're gonna get negative seven. Anyway. I don't know, there's a lot of explanation for that graph. I've just showed you like three different ways. I feel like I rambled it out though. Raise everything you graph that on your own on the test now. Okay, so less than half. So guess what, homies? Based on that, let's see, what do we got next? Try graphing that one on your own in your group. What if I could pause this? Can I pause it? No, I can only stop recording and keep it recording. The retake, I need the test back today, the corrections today. Okay. Oh, I need to do domain and range. Okay. Let's do domain and range. Sorry. Thank you. Let's do domain and range. Sorry. Domain and range, domain and range. Since we're on it. Sorry. Domain. Right? Domain. I washed out. Domain goes forever. Right? And forever, right? So it'll be negative, gonna be domain, domain. Doot, doot. From negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. The hardest part is right in sideways eight, right? And we got an X in the middle, flocka, flocka, right? Range. Is it going to go up forever? Yeah, it's going to go slowly, but it'll go up forever. Is it going to go down forever? Yeah. So negative infinity to infinity. Now, you know what else you can write? Domain. What else can we write for domain? All real numbers. You can just write that because it's everything, right? From negative infinity to infinity is everything right can you do the same thing for range yes all real hashtags we say hashtag instead of numbers all right so go ahead and graph this one go ahead and graph that one how are we doing on time so 45 minutes to track here Oh, what is that? Oh, it's been over like summer vacation. Walk around. My uh, sister-in-law,
What's the H in K? And then we take the square root, but then we multiply by negative 2, right? Take the square root of our numbers, and we multiply by negative 2. Sorry, I was playing video game. Uh, he's here. All right, H and K, can we do it? I want to see what you guys got. Does anyone have it? I feel like you need help with this. Am I feeling right or am I feeling wrong? Ah. So my my uh, H and K is five zero. Sounds like people are helping each other. You guys done helping? Take your time, I'm fine. You guys good? Nick, you good over there? Yeah. I think Brooke and Sylvia, you guys good? Okay, I think it's better. You guys teach each other. It's better than me teaching you. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. So you guys can help each other. So you guys get that? Five, zero? Okay. Now. Now I just, I'm getting the square root, right? So what's the square root of negative one? Yes, I like how you're not answering anything because you can't get the square root of a negative number. As far as graphing it, and use I, right? Those are getting the square root, so go over one. Let's do Godzilla time, shall we? Let's do y equals the square root of x. You guys know how to graph the square root of x, the parent function of that? Parent function? You take the square root. What's square root of 0? What's the square root of 1? So I go over 1, what do I do? Up 1. What's square root of negative 1? 
Okay, and square root of negative, right? What's square root of two? I don't know. You know? Square root of three? Square root of four? Two. One, two, three, four, up two. Square root of five? Six, seven, eight, nine, three. So go over nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Up, one, two, three. And then you connect them. Oh, oh, that's terrible. But you guys are so smart. I know what you're thinking. But sensei, the square root of one is one, but it is also negative one. Is that true? If I took the square root of one, or this is Godzilla time, you guys enjoying this? What's square root of one? One. Because one times one is one. But it's also, right? So, sensei. Remember? It's okay if you call me sensei. It is. But sensei, why is it? Why don't we put square root of one, and why don't we put the negative one there? Right? You guys with me? Square root of one, two, what's square root of four? And? Square root of nine? Three. And? Shouldn't it look like that? I'm dotting it because we didn't graph that part. You know what I mean? This is, if we are being very technical and literal, and I can't think of any other word, this is what it would look like. But mathematicians, I've asked this before, have decided to only graph the top part of a square root. Only the positive number. Because if we graph the negative, what does that not become? It's not going to be a function. Very good, Gabby. So they want it to be a function, so they only graph the top. You guys with me there? Not going to graph the bottom. Anyway, why am I telling you this? Well, first, because I think you're wondering about it. So we're just going to ignore it. They just ignore it. It's always ignored. If you graph it on your calculator, it just does the top. It doesn't do the top and the bottom. And by the way, remember the inverse of a square root, what's the inverse of a, what's the inverse of x squared? Square root of x, right? You know x squared, we graph it's a parabola. Remember how we do the inverse? It's kind of like sideways. Well, it should be a sideways parabola. That would be the inverse. But nonetheless, we want this to be a function. Now, that goes back to teaching moment. And I'm going to get back here. Oh, I should move. Remember when we said, hey, Oh, son of a, I guess I can't teach anymore. It went somewhere. Oh, there it is. Remember when I went, I did this, what was the long problem I did? Uh oh, where'd it go? Remember I did this problem? Remember this one, guys? And we plugged in, I heard the yawn, is this boring? We plugged in 10 and we got 10 on both sides, remember? And then this one, I said, hey, just get the positive because the square root of four is also negative two, remember we talked about that? Well, the reason why this is not an answer is because in graphing, we're ignoring the bottom part and the negative two would be the bottom part so we're only going to pay attention to the 10 as far as our answers goes, mathematically. So just find your answers as the positives, and you'll be good when we take the test. Are we good with that? Okay, so let's go back. Sensei, we're still working on this one problem. The point of this one problem was this. This is what I want you to remember. Square root, because this is square root of x minus 5, the parent function is the square root of x. 
which is over one, up one, over four, up two, over nine, up three. You guys remember, understand that pattern? Remember, understand that? Where's your hand if you understand it? Don't lie. Let me see your hands. Don't lie. Don't lie if you don't understand. Okay. So most of you understand. Those of you who don't understand, you want a second to talk about it and ask the other people? Anyone? Go talk. Okay. I'll, I'll just, I'm going to go look at some video games. Go talk for 10 seconds. Go. That's a cool skirt. Huh? Is it a wrap? Yeah. It looks cool though. I like it. All right. We're still discussing. I'll keep playing video games. Video games. I'm playing video games right now. They're called Krispy Kreme again. Okay, here we go. You guys cool? Okay. So that takes us to this problem. I'm going to say it again. Over one, up one. Over four. Up two, over nine, up three. Let's see if you're with it. Over 16, up four. Okay, good. So with my H and K being five comma zero, you guys with me there? I'm with you, Sensei. One, two, three, four, five. Now, parent function right? Parent function, over one, up one, over four, up two, right? Over, to, so now I, I just shifted everything over here. But I have to multiply by negative two. So instead of over one, up one, what's one times negative two? So I go down two. Instead of over one, two, three, four, up two. What's two times negative two? Negative four. I don't know if I can fit nine in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Three times negative two is one, two, three, four, five, six. So instead of up six, I go down. Instead of up three, I go down six and flock up. That is, let's label it, f of x. Flink. Domain and range. Domain and range. Domain. What's the smallest X of this? What is it? Tell your group. Smallest X of this. Smallest X of the telemetry. Of this. Smallest X of this. What is it? Valerie, what's the smallest X? Five. All the way up to what? Starts at five, goes up to what? You guys, write the whole thing. Write the, write the domain. Domain. Domain and range. Domain. It's a good thing you're learning this domain and range. You're going to use it in real life. And range. Domain and range. Domain and range it goes to infinity and beyond make sure you put a line under the 
one next to five domain and range 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 i'm asking you a question and find out someone ask you what is the smallest range go what's the smallest range smallest range what is it that's the biggest range zero is the largest range because it goes down right this this is the highest point down to negative infinity what's the largest range zero make sure you go negative infinity to zero not zero to negative infinity that is wrong and put the line under this one with the zero because it's equal to zero it's not equal to infinity domain and range i just made that song up would you buy the album no you wouldn't just be nice i appreciate it though i guess it depends on the cost eight dollars that's too expensive i would pay eight dollars for that domain now i got it stuck in my head and range you can hear my song for free on this thing right here domain and right i'll sing it i'll sing it properly so the microphone can hear i feel like i should take my mask off but next week hi i'm sweetie hi you guys do just okay pretend like you're you're when you're studying this sweetie's gonna give you some encouragement you guys study hard and work hard and get lots of sleep you can do it do not be discouraged i love you let me have a big hug oh whoa why did you do that that was inappropriate don't touch me there <laughs> did i cross the line i mean it's a bear right what's there inappropriately to touch anyway right you know okay sorry okay moving on optional let's not do this one right now should we do it you guys want to try this one on your own? Yeah. Okay, I won't spend so much time on it, but you guys go ahead and try it. Domain and 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 range domain and range so And domain and range. All right, can I graph it? What's the H and K? Zero, negative three. Who needs more time for this? Who needs more time? Okay, wait, I'm not sure if they're here yet. It takes me a second. Uh, she is here. What's your name? Nikander. Nikander? Let's hear from Nikander, everyone. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Nikander. You did a good job. All right, man. Good luck. Hey, be safe out there. It's tough out there at Oxnard High School.
I know when it says put to go. But zero, negative three, one, two, three, you got that there, right? And then over one, what's the square root of one? One, because there's no two, right? So this one's kind of easy. Over one, two, three, four, square root of four is, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, up one, two, three. What does it say? I didn't even know. It should say the time. I didn't look. It says time to 31 a.m. I guess so. Is that the time that it's printed or does it say time? It just says 8.31. Yeah, please appear. 8.31 a.m. But I've heard my thinking, right? I don't know. I think it's probably your schedule. What do they do with the schedules? Do anyone go? So, oh, yeah, you just went yesterday, right? Do you need your stuff? Yeah, I think I'll be back in time. I'm going to use that pretty quick. If you're worried about it, take your stuff. If you're worried about taking stuff, just in case. I don't know. All right. Uh, is that cool? Domain and range. You got the do domain and range? I was going to write out. Domain. Where do I start at? Zero to infinity. All right? Make sure you put the line under the zero because it's equal to zero. It can't be equal to infinity. And the range is what? What's the smallest one? Negative three, right? Because it starts here, negative three, goes up to infinity. The hardest thing is writing the sideways eight. Does anyone agree you guys get better at the sideways eight? I hate writing that sideways eight. I don't know who made that up. And it, where do I put the line underneath? Which one? Negative three. Just the infinity, you don't put the line underneath. This can't be equal to infinity. I have another optional one. Should I leave it there, you guys? So tomorrow, we're going to do the same. When I say tomorrow, I mean Tuesday. Except I'm not going to show it to you. I'm going to pop it up there and say, solve this, guys. Go. And then you guys solve it. You put your notes away. Try to solve it on your own. You know, I might even put different numbers on there. Switch the numbers around. Just say, just put like a race, like put a three instead of a two or something, right? Like make this a five or something. Say so go ahead and graph it. That, that'd be fun. Or put a two in front of that or a three. Flipping it. Oh, I'm not going to do that. You guys get a few, few seconds. Okay. Sure. I get it. All right. Optional. We'll do this if we have time. Let's move on. Right. Same thing. H and K. Five. But then I multiply by negative two. Right. Multiply the ups by two, negative two. Okay. For the functions below, find F times G and F divided by G. We have 20 minutes. So, yes. Wait, say it louder. Let me come closer to you because we can't hear you. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll, that'll come back. Oh. Yeah, but first find F times G. All right. Let's go. F times G is X to the sixth times 7 square root of x, right? Just multiply them. But it's not that easy. You guys know what to do? 
what do you do when you multiply? Well, let's, let's change it like this. X is six times seven times X to the what power? One half. Now, if I'm multiplying, what do I do with these exponents? What do I do? You add them. So I gotta add six plus one half. I'm gonna do it right here. Six plus one half. Right? But in order to add fractions, what do I need? Common denominator. So this is six over one. What should my denominator be? Two. So this will be 12 halves, right? Plus one half, which equals what? 13 halves. So six plus one half is 13 halves. This is one X, right? Times seven X. What's one times seven? X six plus one half is 13 halves. So that's F times G. F divided by G, F divided by G will be x to the 6 divided by 7. I know I'm in the way. x to 1 half. Right? You guys with me there? So it's 6 minus 1 half, which is 12 over 2 minus 1 half, which is 11 halves. And then I got 1 over 7, which I'm just going to write it like this. 1 seventh is 1 over 7, right? Times x to the what? 11 halves. And that's all you've got to do. Domain and range. Domain. I'm doing domain and range. We still have, we only have 15 minutes left. I think. That's, that's what I said, right? Is that what I said? Make sure I'm right. F times G. Oh, so now what is X equal to four? So now I gotta plug in four, right? This is what you're asking for, Javier. So seven times four to the 13 halves. Hmm. Domain and range. Like I need. Okay, so going down, let's rewrite this. Seven to the index exponent, right? Square root of four raised to the 13th power. Is it easy to get square root of four, right? What's square root of four? Two. So it's. 7 times 2 to the 13th. What do I do first? Do I multiply or do I do the exponent first? Oh, exponent. What's 2 to the 13th? I don't know. It's so ugly. So i got to do that on my calculator. 2 to the 13th. Domain. You guys better study this. 8,192. 7 times 8,192. And then 8,192 times 7, 57,344 dollars. What if I said I was going to give that to you right now? Would you take that money? That's, you guys plan on driving ever? That's how much it costs to fill up a tank of gas nowadays, you know? <laughs> 
A quarter of a tank? You got one of those big trucks, though, Nick. That's why, right? Have we hit six dollars yet? Have you, have you guys any seen six dollars yet on in Oxnard? I know it's in LA. I know people are saying it was in LA. I saw five ninety nine in in Oxnard. Five ninety nine. Let's move on. We got to do F divide by G. Uh, five thousand seven thirty four. Is that what I got? Okay, cool. And then uh, F divided by G, which we did. X to the so it's the same thing as one seven times X eleventh over two. Right. Now let's plug in four. So I'm going to rewrite this. Okay, so I'm going to write this F divided by G equals, same thing, 1 7th, 1 7th X to the 11 over 2. What do we say X equals? Was it 4 again? Okay, so 1 7th times 4 to the 11 seconds. So then we write the same thing, right? We write, am I going too fast? 1 7th square root four raised to what power raised to the 11 power and so two to the 11th times two to the 11th and then and then you divide by seven or like the way i had it there was divide by seven right one multiplied by one seventh is divide by seven two to the 11 Divided by, is that going to be a whole number? Ooh, 2.92. I don't know. I got a fraction. Either the right, 2.292.57. Or uh, what, what else can we write? Uh, 20,048 divided by 7. I'll accept either one of those answers. 2,048 divided by 7. Was that right? Yeah, to the eleven. Am I right or am I wrong? Thank you, Luciano. Encouragement. Yes. Zara, though, you got. Gabby. Yeah. Jose. I don't know. Nick. Okay. Cool. Maria. Maria, you get that? Am I going too fast? I'm going too fast. Do you have a question? Three. Am I going too fast? I think I am. Am I going too fast for you? Is what I'm saying. I'm going too fast. I'm probably going too fast for other people. Right. That's all right. Sorry. I'm put. I'm putting you on the spot. I apologize. Okay. But anyway, I'm gonna move on. We'll we'll do this again on Tuesday. But Look over the thing, 292.57, right? So either one of those answers I would take. Again, like you can leave it like this and just divide by 7. And do find the inverse. How many more of these do we have? I think we're almost done. Still have 10 minutes. Domain. 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 All right, so how do you solve for the inverse? We'll say y, what do I do? x cubed plus 2, what do I do next? 
x equals y cubed plus 2. Then what? Solve for y. Subtract 2. Subtract 2. Am I going too fast? Equals y cubed. They take the cube root. And then it'll be, so this is what it's equal to. So we'll say the inverse of f of x equals the cubed root of x minus 2. Try to write it like this so you can see. Can you guys make sense of that? That's the inverse. We write it like this, put the f to the negative 1. And I saw it mostly this way, Gabby, you're asking with this. So I'll keep looking, though. I think the book, I don't know how the book, how's the book do it? Do you guys remember how the book does it? I'll look it up. Don't worry about it. Sorry, that was fast. And... So there's the answer. You guys with me? And what do I do next? So i got to graph the function in the inverse. So we still have, let's do Godzilla time real quick. You guys ready for Godzilla time? What's my parent function of this? X to the third power. Let's graph that. Y equals X to the third power, right? Parent function. That means I cube everything, right? So what's zero cubed? What's one cubed? So I go up one, right? What's two cubed? Eight. One, two, three, four, five, somewhere up here. I right, don't even fit it. What's negative one cubed? Negative one, right? What's negative two cubed? Negative eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's my cubic function. That's the, that's the parent function. Raise your hand. I understand that, Sensei. Okay. Let's do Godzilla time. Oh, look at this is all. Let's do the uh, let's do the uh, parent function. I'll do it in red. No, I'll do it in. Oh my gosh, I'll do it in black. Let's do the parent function of cube root of x, right? So what's the cube root of zero? What's the cube root of one? One, because one times one times. What's the cube root of two? Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. eight. Cube root of eight is two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, right? Cube root of negative one is negative one. Cube root of negative eight is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Negative two. So this is, whoops, so. And oh, look, it's also asking you to graph the line of symmetry. But do you guys see the parent functions? You guys with me there? I'm going to erase these though, but. Q is over 1, up 1, over 2, up 8, over negative 1, down negative 1, negative 2, negative 8. Cube root is the inverse. Okay, so let's, I'm erasing all that. Godzilla time is over. Let's graph this one. X cubed plus 2. So my H and K are 0, comma 2. So I go 1, 2, boom, right? And then I cube everything, right? Over one, what's one cubed? One. Over two, what's two cubed, class? I feel like I lost you. Eight. Okay, you guys are just kind of, so somewhere up here. Negative one, negative one, negative two, negative two cubed is negative one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's my, and I'm going to label this. What should I label it? F of X. Now let's do the inverse of F of X, which I'm going to do in blue. What is my H and K? 2 comma 0, right? H and K is 2 comma 0, 1, 2. And now I take the cubed root of everything. I think you guys are just, you guys look focused on your paper. I'm assuming you're doing this on your own, so I'm going to keep going. Cube root of 1 is 1. Q 
cube root of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is yeah. one, two. Cube root of negative one is negative one. Cube root of negative one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is negative two. And my cube root is going to look like this. And remember, the inverse is kind of like the one in the sideways. Let's write the inverse here. F to the negative inverse of X. F to the negative one is inverse of X. But wait, there's more. What do we have to do next? And what's the line of symmetry? Is that hard? What is the line of symmetry? Y equals what? Y equals X. Zero, zero. One, one. Two, two. Three, three. Over four, up four. Negative one, negative one. Negative one, negative one. Over negative two, down negative two. Over negative three, down negative three. And that is your line of symmetry. Just the diagonal right in the middle. You gotta graph that. That's kind of a crazy problem. Is that crazy? I don't know. You know what to practice, though. You gotta practice it at home. Oh, there we go. That's it. We did it all. I'll put it back on. You guys know who that is? You don't know? Very handsome. Okay, that's it. Good job, guys. I'll see you on Tuesday. I'm stopping.